Greetings, everyone. Welcome to your biology class 101. I'm joking, of course. The new, you see, we're going to talk about trees, but not really trees uh, in the, that, that grow outside um, with apples and stuff on, on them. Although our trees will have leaves and they will live in forests, so um, it's not the, the terminology we borrow actually a lot from... Um, botany or biology, whatever you want to call this. But of course, what the kind of trees we're talking about is uh, like general family trees, genealogical trees. And um, so why this is a new chapter, is it a totally new thing? Actually, it isn't. It is a continuation of graphs, because trees are graphs. And so let me start off with a definition of what a tree is. So what is a tree for us? Of course, a tree is something that is green and has leaves and, 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 and birds sitting in, in the branches, but that's not for us. A tree is a connected. Uh, it is important that, you, that we put it there, but we kind of always assume this, so I'm not going to mention it all the time. But importantly, it's a graph, a simple graph, I should say, a simple graph. Let me, let me also put this between... Uh, parentheses. It, it's important conditions, but we kind of always have these, so that's why I don't want to say it. But what is it? What? <laughs> so it's a graph, and here comes the, the the crux, with no circuits. And of course, when I say circuits, I mean simple circuits. Again, that is important because. So let me give an example here. So suppose we have uh, this case. So um, here we are. Uh, yes, Th this for instance would be a tree because it has no circuits. It's not entirely obvious that it has no circuits. It's not so easy to see that you actually have a tree, by the way. Although, don't worry, we will find an easy criterion to see that we have a tree. But um, why did I say simple circuits? Of course, there are always non-simple circuits, namely, here is a silly one, I'll do it just, I go from here to there and come back. That is a circuit, okay? Because I have gone from one node and returned to another node, it is not a simple circuit because I use the same edge twice. So, if I insist there are no circuits whatsoever, then basically the only thing you can have is a single dot, a vertex with nothing else, because once you have an edge, you, have a, you can have circuits. So, but simple circuits, there is none. Okay, so okay, so what else can we say about this? Another way of saying this, equivalently, and this is going to be very important, is uh, there is a unique path between any two vertices. And that is kind of a bit surprising, because we've seen, normally we have a lot of paths, right? Uh, but the reason that we have a lot of paths, basically what it says, is because you have circuits. And so if you have no circuits, then you can have only one path. Now you can say, perhaps, is it true that there is always a path? Yes, that's, that's what, what, being a path between two vertices, what condition is that? That's exactly the connected condition. Okay, connected means every two vertices, there is a path. But what is new is there is a unique path, okay? So just to see here, <coughs> a path from here to there, the only path you can go is up there, down there, down there, okay? So this is equivalent. And uh, perhaps I have to appoint, prove this a little bit. The proof in the book is actually wrong. So I'm not going to go over the proof, I'm going to give you the argument, but I'll, I'll try to correct the argument that's in the proof. Now, first of all, Suppose you have a circuit. So uh, what we say, so what we're going to prove is. So what we need to prove is. So here, <coughs> proof theory a little bit, right? It's from discrete math one again. Uh, if you still remember, <coughs> we have to prove that this is the same as that. But you can also prove the contrapositives. You can say if if you have if you don't have. If, suppose we have a connected simple graph, but it is not a tree. What does that mean? It means that it has a circuit. 
But if it has a circuit, so, so imagine, so I, I'm going to just draw up. So we have a circuit here that means there's one way you can go. You can go around this way, right? So notice now that between this and this point, there are two, two distinct simple parts, namely the upper part going this way and the lower part going that way. So if you have a circuit, you, you can always go in two different ways. Okay, so this proves that if you, uh, if what does that mean now? If you are not a tree, a simple connected simple graph that is not a tree, then there will be more than one part. Okay, so the negation of this implies the negation of that. Now, to show an equivalence, we also have to do it always. So now, suppose we have a unique part between. So now we have to uh, the negation of this implies the negation of it. Now suppose the negation of this. Now we have to show the opposite. The negation of this implies the negation of this. So suppose we have two parts. And now we claim if you have two parts, you can put them together uh, into a circuit. Okay? But and here's where the textbook makes a mistake. So I'll, I'll show you uh, on an example here. Let me figure out a little bit the example. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to destroy the, 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 the... I'm going to make circuits, right? So, um, okay, here we are. Um... No, sorry, that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is this one. Okay. And so let's look at a part from A to D. Okay. So there are two parts. Here's one part. And here's, let, let me perhaps color it, uh, but I, I have to, I'm, you know, I'm going to do this so that, uh, no, this is too. Okay. I, I'm going to do this a little bit with dotted lines and a bit smaller, perhaps. Let me do it this way. So one part would be this part, okay? And let's look at the other part, uh, a, a green part, that will be this part. So we see we have two parts, and they are distinct. So again, what I'm trying to do is showing that if you do not have a unique part, so if there is there are two vertices with two different parts, Simple parts. Okay, sorry, again, part here is always a simple part. Perhaps I should emphasize this here as well. It's so evident that everything has to be simple here that I'm not always saying it. I'm sorry about that. But um, Okay, but it, it actually is the issue here a little bit. So we have to show that if your situation where you have two different parts from one vertex to another, then you have to show that you actually have a circuit. Now, what does the book say? It says, well, go on one path and then return, and that's your circuit. Very nice argument, seems like ironclad argument. There's only one problem. In this example, the circuit that I've drawn is not a simple circuit, because I use this edge twice. So the argument is not correct. So what the correct argument should be is, okay, so here we are, we have... This situation, and I'm just going to do it an example because I don't want to give the actual proof, but I just want to show you how you resolve this issue. You say, okay, let's go into the end point of those parts, and let's look back on, on each of these parts until they meet. Because they're going to meet at some point. The two parts are going to come together since they all start from A. So at least the worst case scenario is they meet in A. But you see, they could meet earlier here. This is a case where they actually meet earlier. Okay? They can, since they're distinct, they don't meet in D, right? There are definitely, the first two edges must be different, right? Um, well, actually, that is even not true also, I realize now. Right, so, okay, I'm going to make my thing a little bit here. So, let's put another guy here. And, and say this is D, oh, this is D, and now let's look at our paths, so my, uh, yeah, sorry, the edge, of course, there's an edge here, well, one part goes this way, and the other part, of course, goes this way, right? So, that, now it's even worse, because even, so, okay, I, I'm not going to give the argument here, but you see what the problem is that the book says. The book says, okay, go from A to D in two different ways, go from A to D, and then return on the other part, and you have a circuit. 
No, you, you, true, you have a circuit, but it's not a simple circuit. But you see that there is a simple circuit, though. So now, in any case, so at some point, if you start from D, at some point, since the two paths are different, they have to diverge. There is going to be a, a fork in the road, and, and one says left path, and the other says right path, or something like that, right? So you go to that point. And then they, the, the roads go different, and again, they have to come back at some point, because they have to come back, because eventually they have to come back to A. And so the, the first point where they split to the first point where they come together, that is a circuit. Now, if you put these two together, so you, let me put it together. You go from the first splitting point, the, 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 no, not the first, but yeah. The first point that is split, you take one road, and then when, you, when the two roads meet again, you walk back on the other road, and then you have your circuit. So that's uh, what it gives you. Now, there is another one that, as I said, is much more inter interesting for us because it allows us to calculate um, the, uh, where is this, sorry. Yeah, the text is a little bit all over the place. I am not so happy with the way they organize the text, so I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So another equivalently, and this is all, so I should say, I'm always assuming a, a connected here. Oh yeah, by the way, perhaps just a fact. What if, if what, what happens with non-connected graphs? Well, you know, if a graph is not connected, then it has connected components. And if each connected component is a tree, then you have a bunch of trees, and so we call such a graph a forest. So that's what forests are, but we won't talk about them. So for us, we always have a connected graph, and so if you have a connected graph, equivalently, if n is the number of vertici, vertices of the tree, then n minus 1 is the number of edges of the graph. So a, a, a tree, a connected graph, is a, a simple connected graph, is a tree if it has one more vertex than it has edges. So that, in this case, we can easily calculate whether we have a tree or not. So, for instance, here, in this case, let's call, let's call, we know it's not a tree, the one that I have now drawn, right? But what are the number of vertices? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What is the number of edges? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, you see, there are too, too many edges. So, if, if let's, let's get rid of some of the edges. So let's get rid of these edges, and now I'm claiming this is a tree. So note that now one of my, my paths doesn't exist anymore, because it can only be one path, right? This is a tree, because how many edges do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So this is the simplest and numerical criterion to figure out that you have uh, a tree. It has to be connected. But if the graph is connected, let's assume, simple connected graph, then you just count the number of vertices and count the number of edges, and that tells you exactly uh, where we are. But notice that, by the way, we have an, an, um, a formula that relates the number of edges to the number of the vertices. Not entirely, it, it relates to the number, the sum of all the degrees divided by 2 is the number of edges. But that's, we cannot really use this here either. Uh, that's a formula that is also true, but it is of a different nature, because that talks about degrees of um, uh, vertices. And this, this is a criterion just about number of edge vertices, number of edges. Okay. Now, there is a very important uh, tool in trees, and actually, when... when so far, what I've this, this given as a tree, everybody that has studied trees says, yeah, but that's not a tree. Right, because not what? Okay, so, and this is what we call a rooted tree. So what is a rooted tree? Is it is a tree in which we pick one of the vertices, and it doesn't matter which one we pick, so one vertex is designated to be the root. It's the designated driver, if you want, designated to be the root. Okay, 
So let's do this here. Uh, let me give a little bit more names here, D, E, F, and G. Say I designate in this tree that I have root E. And so how I'm now going to present, so root tree, that's the concept. That's the only concept. So I have put a root here. So let me, um, I'm trying to get rid of a little bit. No, that's not going to work, but I'll try. Okay, almost, almost. That gets of the other guys a little bit here. This uh, now I've lost too much stuff. Okay, but uh, I'll, I'll restore my tree. So that's the tree. Okay, and so E was my root. Uh, allow me to take C instead. It doesn't matter, but it, it, a little bit more interesting if I do C. But we can take any one, and I'll take another one later on. <clears throat> and and really, this is a decision that is not. It's not that. You have good choices and bad choices. This is a decision that depends on what you need to do with this tree. And on the other hand, and as I said, that's why most people say, what you draw here is not a tree for me. Sorry, I don't think that's a tree. Because they all used to root the trees. <clears throat> and in a rooted tree is a tree where we know what the root is. For instance, the trees that you know are probably genealogical trees, family trees, right? And then on top is the, the ancestor, the old ancestor where everybody has descended from. <clears throat> and that's the root. So that's the root means the oldest ancestor in the uh, in the tree, <clears throat> the, the one ancestor where everybody stems from. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I've seen. I'm sure you have seen family trees like that. Family trees. Okay, I should say why is a family tree sometimes not a real real tree? Because um, it depends on whether you also include daughters, women, and wives. And that makes it a little bit more complicated. But um, in the old days, when women didn't count that much, family trees were really the male descendants. And then we, if you just look at male descendants, there are some examples from, uh, in the textbook, then you get a true tree in which the root is the ancestor, the oldest uh, one in the tree. So, so what does that mean? Okay. Uh, okay. So, all right. I... Okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit, guys. No, not cheating. I just don't want you to give... Uh, <clears throat> I haven't done anything yet, right? so I, I'm still allowed to do whatever I want here before I start my example. I'm going to put C here. C, and what was this guy? This, this guy had the name, but I forget. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so this is C, and then uh, B. That was B, right? Okay. Okay, so here we are. Let's, let's look at this example. It's a little bit better, <clears throat> less, less revealing somehow. So what does that mean that I root the tree when I pick the root C? What you do then is you put the root on top. So we're going to redraw the graph. Remember, the position of the, of the vertices in the graph is not important. Where they're actually pick, uh, depicted on the paper or uh, and on the screen or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. It is the connections between them. So I can put C wherever I want. So now I'm going to put C on top. That's why I want, didn't want to have it on top yet. So now C is on top. And what I do then is, below, just below it, I'm going to do the neighbors of C. That is, in this case, E and B, right? E and B are the neighbors of C. So here is E and here is B. Here is E and B. And I continue this process. Below E, I'm, and sorry, we have, of course... The connections below O E. I'm going to put the neighbors of E that I don't have yet. Of course, so not C. C is a neighbor, but that I have used already. But there's one more neighbor I've not used that is D. So D goes underneath here. It's on this level. It goes D. What about B? B has neighbor C, but I have used C already. So what are the remaining neighbors of B? That is, uh, <clears throat> there are three remaining neighbors, right? Let me. <clears throat> These are. A, F, and G. And so this looks already much more like a family tree, right, by doing this. And typically what one does is one tries to keep the same heights here. So this comes here. The next level should all come on the same level, more or less. It's not necessary because, remember, position is not important. But it helps us read the thing much better. Okay? So... What is the, what's, what happened here? By doing this, first of all, can I do this, right? Well, why can I not do this with any graph, okay? Here we go again. I'm going to make this a non, here it is. This is a non-tree, right? 
I destroyed it by making it. So let me do it in a different color that we can follow uh, here what the effect is here. So let's look at the graph where I add one more edge. Is this a tree? No, because there is a circuit. E, C, B, F, E. So, what goes wrong in my picture here? When I have to draw the, the neighbors of E, I have D, C is already used, but F is, this is F, so I get this kind of cross thing. That's not, you see here, if you think of this, and this is the terminology, by the way, we call this, every node, like this, the parent of these uh, of its neighbors. Not of the neighbor above it, but of the neighbors below it, we call these the children. So we keep really using the terminology of uh, genealogical trees here. So we call this the parent, and it has three children. Now, of course, now this is the parent, and it has also this as child. And I remember, uh, when we do a genealogical tree, we actually look only at male uh, descendants, although that's kind of... Uh, to say that biologically not correct, right? Because you can think you're the father of some of your son, but you might not be. Whereas mother is undisputedly correct, right? So that's why actually very more ancient societies are mat matriarchal, and some still believe that is the right way to uh, uh, see your um, um, your uh, ancestry. Uh, Jews uh, use this. So to be a Jew, you, your mother has to be Jew because that's the only certainty that you have, your mother. You would never know for 100% sure who your father is. This is all before we had DNA testing, of course. Now we could, we could check this. So this, of course, so with the red line, is not what we would consider to be a genealogical tree, and it's not a tree. So that means, what does this mean, for instance? One of the consequences is that in our ter terminology, so I, I'll, I'll write this here, here, um, this we call the parent of these are its children. And we do this for every node, right? So also the top C, what are the children of C? E and B. What are the children of B? A, F and G. What are the children of, children of E? There's only one, D. Okay. I know there is, a, you, might, you might say, but professor, but professor, let, let me explain first a little bit other things and then I will come to this. The bottom guys, right? Because what about these guys? Okay. So, uh, in other words, one thing that we have is every child has a unique parent. Okay? Parents can have several children, but every child has a unique parent. That is except for the root. There's nobody above it anymore. So the root is a bit special. That's, that's what, to take a root, you kind of tell him, okay, guy, you start the whole thing. You, you, nobody is going to help you. You are the one that's going to start everything. And everything else is to now descend from you. Okay. So what about these bottom guys? Okay. They are, have no descendants. Yeah, so we call them children or descendants. So we use the terminology of genealogical trees here. Unfortunately, that is not enough terminology... So we also use the terminology, I do it in green, of trees. So root, although we draw the root normally on top, there are situations where we draw the root in the bottom, which a tree normally... If you look at a tree, by the way, why do we call this a tree? Well, this is our tree, and then it starts branching, right? It has branches. I'm, I'm not, I'm not good, very good at the tree, right? But it looks indeed as a... So it, this is the root, if you want, and there is one, well, the whole thing is perhaps one single branch, and then it starts uh, bifurcating. It got splitting, right? That's how a tree looks like, schematically. You see that this is a tree, but drawn upside down, if you want. Uh, let me see whether I can do this. Um, so if you, oh, sorry, it is this way. If you want to really do this, sorry, we have to... So now it really looks like a tree, right? Where, of course, this, this stem here is kind of... We have to kind of ignore this part and start here, right? Because, yeah, it, it's, the analog analogies only go that far. Now, what is the very farthest point that a tree ends in? Well, at least in the summer, it has leaves. 
So these guys, we are going to call leaves. So vertices without children are called leaves. So we're mixing our, uh, our analogies here. So we're thinking here of the genealogical tree, but then we call them leaves. Nobody calls a child a leaf, right, just because it doesn't have a, ch uh, a child. Uh, whether if you have a, a son and he's, he's never had children, you're not going to call your son a leaf, but okay. So that is uh, the terminology that we have here. Okay. So let me give now a couple of... Uh, yeah, no, 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 sorry. No, a more important thing. How important is the choice of the root? Okay? So we have here... So we think, think of this as an ancestor. So we call... By the way, also we call C an ancestor of F. So we use exactly that terminology. So you will, you will hear me use this terminology perhaps, although I didn't formally introduce it, it, it should be immediately clear what I mean here. So we see here that this is, so if you want, the grandparent. That's the next generation, and that's the third generation. So that's another thing, and we call these uh, height levels. So this we, we call this level zero, or level one, depends a little bit, but let me see. Um, everybody has a different way of calculating these things, so I just want to make sure that I follow the one. Um, yeah, okay. So they call, so this is the levels. Uh, so okay, let me uh, let me try to do this in. No, I'm going to use back this guy in purple here. Yeah. So this is level zero. This is level one, and this is level two. And how do you determine the level if it gets really complicated? Well, the level is the same. So the level. So again, oh, the, I don't know. This is neither trees nor nor family uh, family trees, right? Uh, so, I don't know, I'll, I'll do it in black. So, the level of a, of, of a node, of a vertex, level of vertex, is the length of the path from the root. So, what is, I'm saying a lot of here. First of all, I'm saying... If you're in the root, you have a path to every single of your descendants. Obviously, if you think about genealogical trees, right, or about roots, right? The root of a tree, well, everything comes from that root, right? All the water, all the nutrients and so come through that root. So, there is a path from, ev from the root to every single of the vertex. And why is there a unique path? Well, that's one of the equivalent conditions of a tree. That's the whole reason why we use this definition. So... When I say the length of a path from a root, it's completely uh, from root to vertex, I mean, of course, to the vertex, right? The level of a vertex is exactly the length of the path. So here, for instance, let's draw a path here. I'll do it again in my other dotted line here. So here's a path from A. Oh, what happened? I didn't go. Didn't go. Okay. So here's a path that goes from C to A, and what's the length of that part? Two, that means A has level two. <coughs> now, visually, that's why we visually like to put things on leveled, so that we can really see what the, the various levels are. And so, one more definition, the height of a tree, the height of a tree is the maximum level, is the max of all levels. Now, the maximum level will always be attained at a leaf. Does that make sense? Sure, because if you're not a leaf, you have a descendant, and so you can go even one level down, or le one level up, I guess. Uh, yeah, the terminology is a little bit weird here. The, the, le the number of the, the, the longer path. So, it's, you look at, in other words, to find the height of your tree, you have to look at the, the, the height, the level of all the uh, children, of all the leaves, sorry, of all the leaves, of all the leaves. Now, I, I was keep saying, what about the root, right? But I wanted to have a bit more ter terminology. So let's now change. Uh, let re first of all, return to the actual tree that we had. Let's change the root, okay? Um, I'm going to do this here because otherwise uh, we, we, we might lose a little bit what's going on, okay? 
these conditions here, I'll, I'll repeat them when we need them. So, what, what if we take root, m to magnitude root g? You might say, that's, why do you take g? It's all the way in the end. God knows, right? This might have been, I might have been doing research, and I found all these people, and I found connections between these people. I looked at uh, old books, archives, and or, or I Google things, let's say, or I look at face, FaceTime, a Facebook, and on Facebook I found all these people, and I befriended them, and, and I saw that they are descendants of each other, and just connecting everything, and then I saw, oh, G is actually the oldest of everybody, so I'm going to take G, my root. Okay, so what happens if I take G to be my root? Let's look at how completely different the tree becomes. So, okay, here is my root. Um, so here is going to be G. All right, G, you move there. Okay, and now we oh, we follow the procedure. You take G. So perhaps I'll I'll do this a little bit following the coloring here. Um, let me go back to the regular thing. So I, I took care of G. Then I look at the neighbors of G. There's only one new neighbor that is B. Okay, so uh, okay, so it, it, well, now this is a bit big, but okay. Uh, B. So here is B. Sorry, here is B, and oh no, this is B. That's that. Then I look at the new neighbors of B. Those are. A, C, and F. So those become the children of B. A, C, and F. So A, uh, C, and F. Okay, now for each of those, I have to find its uh, descendants. F has no descendants anymore, neither does A, but C does. C has one more neighbor, that is E. So I'm looking now at C, and I see there's one more neighbor, E, here. So I'll, I'll do the neighbor E. Um, so we have E here. Now let me write C over here that it doesn't go inside my... And this is my neighbor E. Now E itself has a new, another neighbor, D. Right? So this is the last one here, of the last of our neighbors. So uh, that is D here. And so look at this. Now... Visually, 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 we get a tree. Okay, that's the visual image here. So, and it is, but what has changed is, first, first of all, uh, parent relations have completely changed, right? So, where, as in this example, A, F, and G were the descendants of B, now it's A, C, and F, and G is the ancestor of B. Of course, the neighbors are still the same. They have, it still has the same neighbors. It's just the order in which they appear has, has changed. Moreover, uh, A and F now have become leaves and D, whereas in the previous one, A, F, G, and D were the, the leaves. So, slight change in, in what are the leaves. Not too much can change, but there are some changes. The most drastic change is, of course, as you see, the level. So what level is this one? So this is... Uh, what am I doing? So what is the level on this one? Well, we just calculate the path, right? So um, the path, one. Uh, so one, two, three, four. So this has level four. D has level four, whereas before it had level two. So you see, it, it, it changes the parent-children parent relationship by choosing a different root. That makes sense, right? Uh, but it also changes the shape, if you want. Okay? So an, another terminology that I should uh, include is when we talk about uh, the degrees... Ah, okay, perhaps one thing that I should say perhaps first. Um, what we essentially do is make this into a directed graph. Although we don't need to draw it, it is a directed graph, right? Because if we, we, oh, if we think about ancestry as a being uh, the one more higher than the other one, then it becomes a directed graph, right? So now we could, the path that I drew from G to D is, is in the direction from the ancestor to its uh, descendants, okay? So we, by choosing a route, you basically choose a direction. 
So I can in perhaps also visually um, indicate this by saying, okay, if I choose C the root, then these become the directions. Well, that is completely illegible. So uh, let me try to do this over again, but not using, okay, I can use one of these. No, that's too big. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm playing too much with my colors, right? Too much fun with my colors. So. So here we go. Um, if I start from C, then I can have, then these are the directions in which I go. Because C is the origin of everything. If instead I start from G, let's see how this changes. Now everything goes this direction. So that's perhaps the most drastic change is the direction in which we walk. So whereas a tree is an undirected graph, Choosing a root makes it into a directed graph, and therefore, very often, we uh, mis sometimes I might sometimes misspeak, mis mis misspeak, namely say, How many? What's the degree of B? I would say, Oh, it has three children. Of course, it has one more degree. It's so the degree of any vertex is the number of children plus one ancestor. There's always on exactly one ancestor. So the number of children is one less than the degree of the uh, um, vertex. Okay. And so what is important is we, we talk about trees, um, the arity of a tree. So the arity, of course, this is again a very mathematical term. It, it, it's not even an actual word. If you look it up, if you type it in, 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 your, in your Microsoft, in, in a document, it goes like on the line, it's... Uh, this is not a word, or it changes something. So, but arity means uh, the maximum number of children. So, if, for instance, what is the arity of uh, this tree? Well, we see this tree has arity three, right? Because this guy has three children. The same here. This has arity three. Uh, a very common tree, so I'm going to draw very quickly a tree that is that we're going to see a lot, is what we call a binary tree. So this is an example of a binary tree because every uh, vertex has exactly zero, one, or two children, right? At most, two children. So this is an example of a binary tree. And very many trees are binary trees, decision trees, game trees. We will talk about game trees. We will do decision trees, um, uh, testing tree, the trees. A lot of trees have uh, are binary. And then it sometimes helps to talk about, to orient, to, to order the children. So if you have a genealogical tree, one normally in the genealogical tree writes the oldest son to the left and the younger ones to the right, or the other way, depends on, on but, but one, one keeps a certain order, right? It's not necessarily, remember, neighbors are normally not ordered, there's not a preferred neighbor, well, you might think there's a preferred neighbor, but normally we don't order them. But in trees, because we have to put them one next to the other, if, if we try to level our tree, if we want to make a tree that is very leveled, then we, have, then we are bound by the fact that one is on the left and another one is on the right. So we get, get an automatic ordering and we use that. We, so we will call this, for instance, the left child or the left descendant and this the right descendant. Okay? And so you see here, um, every father ancestor has either two children, a left and a right child, one child, and some of them have none. So, just to get all our, all our uh, concepts that we had, what are the leaves? Let's talk about the leaves of the tree that I just draw. Well, here are the leaves. So, let's do the leaves in green, because leaves look green, although they are now brown, so I'm going to do them brown, right? They're getting... Okay, uh, if you watch this in the fall, this will be brown leaves. If you watch this in the spring, this will be green leaves. I'm going to do brown because I made this, you see, November 13th that I made this video. So we have a brown leaf here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So, so we have a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf. These are the ones without children. 
Okay. Let's also, what else do we have? The level. What's the level of this guy? Well, I drew it leveled, right? I made make sure that I had a leveling. So this is level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. So 0, wow, well, that's not legible, so I have to do this. Level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. So there are only two leaves that have level 4, and then a couple of... So notice this is a leaf that has level 3, but it's not... Uh, sorry, it's a... I mean, it's a vertex that had level 3, but it's not a leaf. Okay? So the level is 4. What all concept? The height of the tree. So what's the height of the tree? Well, 4, right? The 4 levels, so... This is the height 4 tree. It's a binary... The arity of the tree is 2, because it has at most 2 children. Um, so the maximum number of children uh, per, per, per vertex. Uh, what else... Mm, well, that's all the concepts that we talked about, right? Um, okay. So, um, now I want to, uh, there's, let's see here, I don't want to make this, I'm going to stop this video here because I want to not make too long videos, but I have to continue, so I'm going to do a second video in which I'm going to do uh, more counting problems on video. That, that will be much shorter, so I want to end a little bit with a few, uh, um, a few uh, applications. I already mentioned genealogical trees, another, uh, uh, so where, where are trees used? We will see very nice applications to trees, like I said, in games, gaming trees and decision trees and so on, but other ones are organizations. So you you would have, uh, for instance, uh, uh, a, a corporation. It has a CEO, and under the CEO are the various uh, v VPs, and under the VPs you have the assistants and the directors and assistant directors. And so you get this organizational chart, which is a tree. So I'm not going to draw one. Another one that you very well, I'm sure, uh, aware of at least perhaps less nowadays, because computers are kind of, you don't see underneath the hood anymore, but when you, like me, grew up with the emergence of, of, of computer science and computers, that we, we you know very well that the directory, uh, file directory, so um, the, uh, directories in, in, in computers is our trees. We, and, and remember the root, the root is always denoted by this backward slash. And then you have um, the uh, subdirectories, and then the subdirectories of that, and the subdirectories of that, and so on. Okay? So normally you have the root, and then you have something called USR here. That's one. So here's the root. Yeah, sorry, the root has a very strange name, and this root is called user. This root is called bin. And there's a bin root. Uh, root. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I boxed this. Yeah, sometimes instead of really drawing notes, we, we, we put boxes there. So I'm going to use boxes instead of notes. It is, it is a representation, right? And then you also have sometimes a directory called temp, where you do some temporary stuff. And then those, you have user, you have uh, me, and some other guy uh, is, is a user. And then those have subdirectories, and so on. Doc, then, then this has docs, and pics, and movies. And whatever you 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 look at your own computer and you see all these directories, right? That, that's a tree, okay? Now a tree that you might not be so well uh, uh, familiar with is um, sorry, where is this? Ah, is uh, isomers. And this is actually the or, I'm, I'm I'm saying this because it's the origin. The ideas of uh, Cayley came up with this because he was looking at uh, the following. Um, let me take here, what is it here, C4, C4, H10. So we have four carbon uh, atoms and H10 uh, hydrogen atoms, and uh, we can combine them into molecules. But there are different ways of doing this combination, and this, are so, this, this gives you the different, different ways of combining give to what we call isomers. So, they, they, in other words, they contain the same, these are molecules, we talk about mo molecules here, so these are molecules, right? Molecules that have the same number of atoms, uh, it's of the same type, 
but they are combined differently. And so here is an example, and this is perhaps historically the first example. Uh, again, I'm not going to draw now. Um, so we have the four carbon. Now, we, what we need to know is what? So what does these numbers tell me? This tell me there are four uh, carbon and ten hydrogen atoms. So these will be the nodes, okay? I'm going to draw the four here. Now, there's another thing that we need to know, and this is, this is the chemistry part. The degree of C is 4, and the degree of H is 1. So, a hydrogen molecule can only, has, can only bond with one other atom. A, a, uh, <clears throat> a carbon, so this is carbon, right? C, H is hydrogen, hydrogen, and C is carbon. So a carbon atom has four bonds, and in order for it to be stable, it has to bond with four uh, other guys. It doesn't have to be hydrogens, but in this case, it will be the hydrogens or, or, or other carbon uh, guys. And so here's a, a possible uh, configuration that satisfies these uh, conditions. So I haven't drawn the edges yet. So th these, these are going to be vertices. And here are the edges between the vertices. And so you note, so I, I repeat, these conditions come from chemistry. So this is from, from physics, of quantum physics. I don't know what you're going to call this, so I'll say from chemistry. These chemistry uh, conditions. They, they are determined by the nature of these atoms. So um, notice that we have exactly what we want. Degree 4, degree 4, degree 4, degree 4, degree 1, degree 1, degree 1, degree 1. Degree one. And <coughs> isomers, <coughs> now I'm not a chemist, so I cannot really explain this or, or a physicist, but isomers have to be trees. There cannot be circuits, because circuits would kind of circuit out the, the molecule. So they, they have to be arranged in a tree form. Okay? It's also, it also says that, uh, so how many atoms in total we have? Four of those, ten of those, so 14. So how many bonds should there be? One Less, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? That's the other constraint. Now, this is not the only arrangement, and by the way, this has a name. This is called butane. But then Cayley, or I don't know Cayley, or other people observed that you can also have this combination. So I'll draw it a little bit differently. Um, okay. Sorry, so here they are, the four bonds. Uh, this is these four bonds, this are, has these four bonds, and this has these four bonds. So, is this a tree? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, yeah, yeah, I counted 13, right? 13 edges, 14 vertices, yes, yeah, so this is a tree. And it, again, satisfies these extra conditions that come from chemistry. Okay? But it is different. Why are these two not isomorphic? Well, let's look at the degrees of the degree neighborhoods, right? So this, this guy here is degree 4 and has three neighbors also of degree 4. That doesn't exist here. Okay? So when we have to show that two trees are non-isomorphic, that's... It's going to be harder because one thing we cannot use is what we used in the last quiz is the existence of parts of different length. Because, well, circuits of different length, because there are no circuits. Sorry, I should say circuits. There are no circuits, so forget about that thing. But we can look at degrees here. And so here we see they are not isomorphic, and this, therefore, is a different isomer. If, look, again, na nature as... as doesn't care exactly either how this is implemented. This implementation, how it physically bonds these things and how it's curved together, that doesn't matter. So it's, uh, it's not... So if you do draw this, if this is shaped in a different way, but structurally, as a graph, it's the same, it's considered the same molecule. Now, this is, as I said, not, and this is called isobutane. So this is an example of trees. And this is also something interesting. These are non-rooted trees. 
it doesn't matter here what the root is. We don't care about the root. You could design, take a root, but you see, it doesn't really say anything here about these particular molecules, right? It kind of breaks the symmetry. It break, breaks the beauty of the molecule by taking a, a root here. Okay, perhaps a little bit, you could say this might be a root, is somehow in the middle, but remember, this is, in the middle is a wrong description. That is a pictural or visual dis dis description where we only should talk about degrees of neighbors. Now, it is true that this is a special uh, vertex because it has three degree neighbors, three degree four neighbors, or three Cs that are neighbors. So, um, there's one, and there's going to be a homework problem on... on um, so, what is the, the general formula, by the way? Just, just using this... Ah, sorry. Just using these two constraints, one can show that the type of um, of these small uh, isomers is always uh, there. Have to be if there are n carbon, there have to be two n plus two uh, hydrogen. That is just by calculating the number of degrees. I, I'll I'll leave that up to you. But we do the calculation of degrees. We will do in a separate video because I don't want to overload my videos. There, there, there might. You can take a break also, I guess. Uh, okay, so that's all I want to say for in this video, and then. In the the one below here, I will talk more calculations, and you'll see very interesting things that you can.